My name is Jasmine Singer from Our Hen House, and today we're giving you a vegan taste of Chinatown, New York City. So cute, way cheap. There's no way to possibly have a proper tour of Chinatown, the vegan way, without this guy beside me. I'm so excited that Patrick Kwan is joining us. Hi, Patrick. Hey, Jasmine, how are you? So excited that you're here with us today. I have noticed that there is a lot of vegan options. They're like hidden gems here in Chinatown. And I'm wondering, is it true that a whole lot of veganism is just already entrenched in the Chinese culture? Yeah, and vegetarianism actually has a really long and rich history of Chinese culture. And a lot of the vegan staples, such as like soy milk and tofu and seitan, are all from Chinese vegetarian cuisine. So today, we'll check out some of those and also try to see what else that we can find. Let's go to some of your favorite places. I guess we'll think beyond just broccoli and tofu today. There's no broccoli in real Chinese food. <laughs> you can apparently get a bubble tea soy milk iced coffee in Chinatown. Mm -hmm. I like that you can eat the tapioca pearls. It's tapioca, right? Yes, it's tapioca. Mm -hmm. Good job. It's like lunch, except it's not. Tell me a little bit about Buddhist teachings on animals. Well, in Buddhism, uh, there's a very recognition of the suffering of animals and actually the suffering of all beings, of all living creatures. So you would see that vegetarianism is a very big part of Chinese Buddhism and also Buddhism in general. The main one of the teachings of Buddhism is try to alleviating suffering and also freeing beings from suffering, and which is why that animals are a very big part of it, and which is why many people who um, observe Buddhist teachings would also be vegetarian and also a very big part of it is not only freeing suffering but also having compassion. Vegetables in so many ways is at the heart of Chinese cuisine and some of the absolute best places to get it in New York City is down here in Chinatown. Specifically we're under the Manhattan Bridge where you can score a deal. Right Patrick? What do you like? Well um, this is actually one of my favorites. This is called winter melon and this is great for soup and it's also great as a dessert. So this is what is also sometimes called Chinese broccoli. It's actually called gai lan, um, where, you know, traditionally for, um, you know, the Chinese really like the texture of the vegetable. So it's like the stem is actually what is most, um, you know, prized. This, is, this kind of looks like a, a, a piece melon. of corn. It is a bit of melon and um, it's great for stir fries. And here is actually like a Shanghai style bok choy. This and is my favorite. That, yeah, and you'll see that this is like a green bok choy rather than a white bok choy. And this is a uh, turnip, which is a basically almost like a white carrot. So it's great for like turnip cakes and something that maybe we will try at one of the Chinese restaurants. Turnip cakes, yes. How do you say, I don't know, how do you say, I love vegetarian food in Chinatown? All I tell you guys so sick. Oh, Was that good? Mm, I guess so. Try it again. Maybe. I think one thing that's really exciting about Meiwa is sometimes the uh, products that are imported, you may not be able to tell what the ingredients are, whether they are vegan or not. And the great thing about Meiwa is that they do all the research and all the work for us, so we don't have to look into the ingredients. I can just go like, is this vegan? Is this not? And they will let us know. What are some of the products made out of? When people hear, you know, fake meat, they think, oh, what's in that? And of course, my response is, do you know what's in the real stuff? <laughs> Yes. Um, well, majority of our items is, again, soybean made and it's soy based. Um, but slowly we're getting more into different products because a lot of people are allergic to soy. So we have um, wheat based items. Um, we're trying to do more mushroom items. And uh, we're also carrying a, um, a main ingredient called konyaku, which is yam flour, which is very, very good for the digestive system. And it's a lot in a lot of our seafood products where it brings out the chewiness in a lot of them. We want like very regular meat eaters to kind of have a healthier diet. So we try to make work with our manufacturers to create the best texture ever, that they can't even tell the difference. This is vegan squid jerky. Vegan roasted squid jerky. 
Mm. <laughs> it's good. Spicy. Spicy. Mm. Try it again. Try it again. Oh, it's on sausage. We're here at Animal Haven on Center Street, and Patrick, I didn't even know you were taking me here today. No, I'm really excited to be here because at Animal Haven Soho, which is just right over the edge of Chinatown, you will see this nonprofit. They've been around for a decade, Animal Haven. They've had this um, storefront adoption center uh, that basically competes with the pet stores. This place has been around for decades, and when I was a little kid, the best tofu custard is the custard that's right up on top, which is the softest. So oh yeah? You have to wake up around 8 a.m. to get it, probably. Wow. Oh my god! All oi tong yan gai so sick. All oi tong yan gai so sick. Buddha Bodai is one of my favorite restaurants, maybe my favorite restaurant in the entire universe ever. I came here after I got married at City Hall. That's awesome. Well, Buddha Bodai is one of my favorite restaurants and it's definitely one of the go-to places I go to in Chinatown. And you get an eclectic crowd here because it's a kosher restaurant. So when you walk in, who might you see here? It's the only certified kosher restaurant in Chinatown. So um, very commonly, you would see maybe a table of Buddhist monks. You'll see a table of Hasidic Jews. You'll probably see a good table of Williamsburg hipsters. And um, also like a nice table of Chinese ha family. So it's a really great mix, a really perfect New York City postcard. What are some of your favorite items on the menu here at Buddha Bodai? The appetizer sampler. So um, here you have like a veggie pork, a veggie duck, a veggie roast pork, and this is actually made of gluten, so it's wheat gluten is seitan, and with like a sweet sauce. And right underneath here, you have vegan jellyfish, wow. which I'm so excited by, and it's one of my favorite things. It's a uh, pumpkin shark fin soup. You see this? You see? Is it like noodle things? It's a shark fin. Can you? It's a that? vegan shark fin. Of course, I made them from seaweed. Yo, oh, wow. Is this a popular item here? Very popular. Very popular. What is shark fin soup? It's a dish and soup that is nothing but a status symbol, and it's extremely cruel. I mean, imagine having your limb hacked off and thrown back in the ocean to die, and that's what happens to about like 73 million sharks every year. And we're just really excited that, you know, this year, um, Governor Cuomo actually um, signed a law to ban shark fin. Wow. I'm a vegetarian for more than 20 years. And uh, to make money is the first goal to open this restaurant right? because I don't have uh, choices. I, I didn't realize that it's a business like this good. So you, can't, you cannot believe how many vegetarian people and vegan people come to my restaurant. This restaurant is not difficult to be a vegetarian, really, because they think about the meat just because they're addicted to it. But after, in their memory, they won't eat the meat. But after they taste my food, same as, so, so what's the difference? They actually are one of the few restaurants that still make all their own vegetarian meats. Yeah, don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> so we're here at Vegetarian Dim Sum House. I love Vegetarian Dim Sum House, but I don't actually know what dim sum means. Well, dim sum actually has a dual meaning. It means a little bit of heart. It also represents the people who are making it. It takes a lot of time and also heart in order to make good dim sum. And it also means to pick what your heart desires. So it has a dual meaning. This one? Steamed buns? Steamed? Fried. Steamed. Fried. <laughs> this is the shrimp dumpling. And that's a monk dumpling, and which has like sticky rice and ham in it. And then that's a spinach dumpling, and that's um, over there, that's a, the turnip cake, um, this fried, uh, pan fried turnip yeah. cake. And over here we have these um, fried sesame buns that are awesome. It almost tastes like a donut. Yeah, this is incredible. I'm gonna stop recording now and eat because it's never too late for dim sum here at Vegetarian Dim Sum House. That's awesome. We're here at House of Vegetarian, which is one of the oldest vegetarian restaurants in New York City. And is it the oldest vegetarian restaurant here in Chinatown? House of Vegetarian's been around since 1983, so it's been around for over 30 years. I've been coming here ever since I was a little kid. Amazing.
even though we've been here all day, we have just barely started to scratch the surface of the awesome vegan offerings available here in Chinatown. And so many vegans and vegetarians and people who just love vegan food, they don't even realize how many cruelty-free, plant-based options there are in Chinatown, in my Chinatown, in your Chinatown, or even at your local Chinese restaurant. So go try it. It's it's really amazing. It's I'm getting hungry talking about it. I think there's another ball in here. I'm just going to... I'm just gonna eat it. I'm just gonna eat it. Oh my god. It's so good. Do you want some? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All I Tanyan guys so sick. All Tanyan guys so sick. Wait, before you go, let me tell you about Our Hen House, which you can find at ourhenhouse.org. We're a nonprofit that produces daily resources for people who want to change the world for animals. So we have an online magazine, and we have a weekly podcast, and we're working to mainstream the movement to end the exploitation of animals. So join us. We have a great time.